hybrid shooting video photos video photos how's that for an intro roll the real intro i had so much fun shooting the sony a7 IV in my previous video where i visited my hometown if you haven't checked that out check that out but i found the camera so effortless to both shoot videos and photos very quickly and i was just so happy with the results that i thought i would make a video to show you the settings that I used. Now, out of the box, by default, switching between photo and video, you'll have all the same settings. You'll have the same picture profile, the same shutter speeds, the same, so eh, not great for hybrid because you kind of want both to be a little different sometimes, especially with shutter speed. So by default, you have to go to the operations menu and you have to sort of go into what settings you'd like to sort of mirror between the two. So if you want your picture profiles to match between the two, if you're doing photos in standard and video in standard, then you can keep that the same in both, but anything you check will be different between the photo and the video mode. So uncheck anything you'd like to sort of stay the same. Now, once you create all your settings, you wanna save them into one of the banks, like bank number one. And to do that, you can find that. Where do you find that? Okay, let's find that. Under the red menus, camera set memory. Now, I don't dive into the menu like crazy. Instead, go to my menu and add your, add your my menu to, add your my menu, add the, the camera set memory to my menu. That way, anytime you make a change and you wanna resave, it's quick to find. So as a perfect hybrid camera, this is the three levels I envision. Number one, you're photocentric. So your aim is to take mostly photographs and then perhaps just a little bit of video of your travels. The second one we'll discuss is if you're video centric, so you're shooting mostly videos of your travels and you're gonna just take a couple of snaps. And the other is what I was doing, which was a flat out 50-50 perfect split. You are ultimate hybrid ism So switching between photo and video is very easy on the Sony a7 IV because of the switch underneath the mode dial, photo, video, and S and Q, which stands for speed and quick, slow and quick. <laughs> I know everything. S and Q mode is also super convenient because it slows down your footage automatically without having to do it in post. Now our strategy for the perfect hybrid camera is all revolved around the one, two, three system that I created. Basically what we wanna do is we wanna set our most used or I think of it as my emergency, let the camera quickly take care of things under the one setting. Now the way it works is we wanna be able to jump from photo to video to S and Q under that bank. Everything you saved under one should make sense from photo number one to video number one to S and Q number one. So you could shoot a, just a quick little video and then something happens really quick. You could flick it to bank number one for photo and just get a quick photo if something just happens in front of you very quickly. No, you're okay. Thanks. All right, let's do a travel scenario in which you are photocentric. So in this case, I like to shoot the camera in manual mode. I'll set up my camera settings for the situation. So that means that I have a, a certain ISO, I have a certain shutter speed that's fast enough to hand hold, and I set my aperture. So my exposure, my white balance, everything is set up for walking around and I'm taking snaps. What I want now is that my bank number one for video is ready to take just a little bit of quick video. Then I stop and then I turn it back to photo, get off one, go back to manual, and I keep shooting. So if I'm shooting photos, I'm shooting some cool street photos, and all of a sudden I want some video, I just flick the switch to video, and now I can just hit record and it's recording the 4K 24 frames a second video in s -Cinetone. Now, I also, by the way, have made my shutter, I turned this guy off. My shutter is the only one that records because it gets confusing. It's like, am I in photo, am I in video? No, you are always gonna record or take po photos with the shutter. This I just made a, I can't ever, I don't know, I can't find, but this one, yes. 
So you photocentric people, you have to decide what you want for your video number one setting. This should be all set up and ready to go. So my settings are here, I'll list them. They might not be the settings you want to put on your bank one. It depends if you wanna shoot 4K or HD. I recommend 4K if you're traveling. Um, once in a lifetime, man, come on, all the resolution. <laughs> Also your frame rate, I like for travel and for walking around 24 frames a second, looks a little, a little more movie-ish, 24 frames a second. And also, since I want the right shutter speed for video, which is kind of slow, for video you wanna shoot one over 50th or one over 60th, if you're shooting 24 frames a second or 30 frames a second. Um, but if you're photocentric, you're probably not walking around with an ND filter, which is like sunglasses for your lens. Because if you switch to that bank number one, and all of a sudden it's in video mode at 1 50th of a second and it's super bright out, it's gonna be so bright, the image. So you might wanna set up your quick video mode to go into aperture priority. Set your aperture to F4 or F5. I don't like to set an aperture that's too closed for video because if there's any little speck of dust on your video, you're gonna see it in all your footage. So I prefer to stay under, like just F4 is fine. This means the camera will, if it's bright out, will probably pick a fast shutter speed. And so that means any movement might look a little juddery. So buses and cars going by. But if you're photocentric, you don't care about that. <laughs> When I did the Hoboken video, I had an ND filter on for video to, so I could shoot at 50th of a second, uh, but then I also shot my photos with the ND filter on. Something you could do as well. Now, video-centric is just the opposite. You probably have an ND filter on to keep your shutter speeds nice and slow. You're probably shooting in a picture profile like S-Log or something that you can color grade later, but you want a couple of snaps. And so in this case, your bank one is going to be Take a quick photo that's set up. Now to do that, wait, here, here? I don't know where I'm putting it. <laughs> you want your settings to be very automatic for photos. So again, I usually default to aperture priority because as a photographer, I wanna pick my aperture usually to be a little more wide open so that I can pinpoint my subject. By the way, we should talk about, be careful with RAW and JPEG. If you <laughs> accidentally set one of the banks to shoot JPEG only, and you're a raw shooter, you might be shooting raw photos and then all of a sudden you put it on bank one to shoot more photos and all of a sudden all your images are JPEG only. Now, if you're 50-50 like I was, what's great is I was just living on bank number one, on preset one. And so it was so fun walking around, not worrying about settings too much, just taking, using the camera in a semi-auto mode, shooting raw photos, aperture priority, auto ISO, auto, white balance, fine. I was gonna edit the photos later anyway. And my bank one for video was 24 frames a second. So I could just shoot, you know, real life, <laughs> get some video shots. I could also do some talking heads at 24 frames a second. And then my S and Q was set for any slow motion at uh, two and a half times slow motion. So I just went through the three modes and I was able to produce photos, videos, and slow motion videos effortless, you know what I mean. Now, any changes you make while you're in bank one or bank two or bank three, they stay. Even if you turn the camera off, even if you take the battery out, all the settings will remain if you stay on bank one. The only time they disappear and reset is if you go to two, then back to one, everything will be reset. Now, something else that's great about the banks is if you happen to change what your custom buttons do, like for example, if you know white balance used to be down here, but then you changed it here. If you go into your banks later, those buttons are updated to what they do, which is great. Imagine that nightmare that you'd have to sort of resave all the custom buttons and the function, function menu, the feng shui menu. Uh, so that's great that it obviously makes sense that if you change your custom buttons, they're updated in the banks. All right, so what's my one, two, three? Well, we already talked about what one is. Definitely make one your emergency photo or emergency video. This, of course, depends if you're photo-centric or video-centric or 50-50. Uh, but my number one is definitely going to get the shot. Bank number two for photos is my birding, but it's also 
people <laughs> or animals. I just have to quickly change if it's a bird, a person, or an animal using this back dial that cycles through my three things. But I put it as birding. It's got bird eye detection ready. It's got a high shutter speed ready. It has the right focus mode ready. It is set to high burst. So I know I could be like, da 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 da. So my bank two for birding or any quick action here is the same auto white balance. I have starting at 800th. I actually picked a shutter here for this one. So this is in manual mode. And again, the little center focus point, the flexible large, it's at a high burst. Again, I'm on bird tracking, auto white balance, ISO. I put up at 400 to start. So I am shooting in manual mode, but my 400 ISO should keep my shutter speed pretty high. Now, if, if I'm in super sunny conditions and I want to update my birding bank number two, I just hit my down here on my wheel, which is my my menu. It goes right to my menu. Here we go, my menu. And then I know in my menu, I have camera set memory there. I could always update it quickly using my menu. I recommend using one of your custom buttons as a my menu that you can quickly update your one, two, three. And my third bank for photo, I call the street photography one, emergency street photography. This is a little different than the first one. The first one is shooting raw. It's also shooting aperture priority. It's less concerned about movement, action, and focus. Where the third one I made F11. F11, high ISO, that will give me a lot of depth. And I'm also shooting a JPEG in black and white. So for the video, again, I'm thinking, am I switching the dial? So number one, again, is, uh, you know, quick emergency video. Also, no pick, no S-log for my number one video. I'm just shooting in as Cinetone, no grading. It's just grabbing video of the kids or whatever. It looks nice. But my number two, remember, was married with the bird. So if it's bird photography and I'm shooting high burst and I want to grab some video of those birds, well, now I'm shooting at 60 frames a second 4K in a crop mode. Uh, so I'm a little closer. It's shooting probably slow motion. It's got the right autofocus setting on there. And um, it's definitely shooting also in S-Log there. So I could color grade in case there's craziness with the settings. I just noticed that for my 4K 60, my shutter speed is also wrong. A learning moments here. So if we go to 125, I hit the, the down on the wheel here. My down is my menu. And my menu on, here's my menu on this, this one right here. The third one always has camera set memory. And I can redo. Now you got to be careful, by the way. If you hit OK for the wrong one, it just erases. Every, you can't undo. <laughs> so... This is my second, yes, number two, hit OK. And now my video number two is set up. And the third video setting for me is the one that I have the most control over. It's probably for when I'm talking, my talking head. It's definitely S-Log3. I'm gonna color grade it. I have to set the shutter speed. Everything's manual on that bank number three. And for my SNQ, my first bank is just regular old 4K slow motion at two and a half times slow, which is for video shooters, if you're shooting 60 frames a second, 60p and slowed it down in the computer later. Remember, no sound at SNQ. But my second bank is, again, the birds. Shoot some bird photos, maybe get some 60 frames a second. The next one is 120 second frames per second. Did that make sense? <laughs> 120. It's a five times slow, sh um, five times slower. But really, the one, two, three has really made hybrid shooting effortless. So yeah, I said it right that time. <laughs> and it's been so much fun shooting with the camera. Uh, check the comments because a lot of times people put what their settings are and we could all help each other shoot better hybrid videos. All right, I hope that was helpful. I'll see you next time. <laughs>